11 evidence-based methods to maximize muscle strength taken from the recently published review from the world-renowned professor of exercise science, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld. And the first strategy to maximize your muscle strength is that traditional concentric eccentric training seems to provide greater improvements in strength than concentric training alone. And when we're doing our exercises, we want to make sure that we're going through a full range of motion because that generally maximizes strength gains across most contexts. With respect to intensity, there does seem to be a dose-response relationship where higher training loads produce greater subsequent gains in strength. Generally, heavier loads that allow between 1 and 5 repetitions per set maximize muscle gains over time. So if you're lifting heavier weights, then by definition you're not going to be able to do as many repetitions before failure. So it seems that to maximize muscle strength, we want to aim for between 1 and 5 repetitions per set before we reach failure. Which brings us to the next point, how many sets should we do? Well, it seems that greater volumes of resistance exercise produce greater improvements in strength up to a given point. More specifically, it seems that the magic number is between 2 and 3 sets. If we start doing more sets than this, then there's limited additional benefit. Overall, the up-to-date research that we've got today in 2023 suggests that we want to use relatively heavy loads, that is, loads that allow between 1 and 5 repetitions per set, and approximately 2 to 3 sets per exercise. But I want to dive deeper into to these exercise recommendations because depending on your goals your exercise protocol may vary significantly. We used to prescribe exercise recommendations based on the so-called repetition continuum where to maximize strength we'd be aiming for between one and five repetitions. If we're aiming for muscle growth and hypertrophy then it's between eight to twelve repetitions and if we want to aim for endurance then it's 15 repetitions and above. Like we've mentioned there is agreement that between one and five repetitions per set is optimal for muscle strength. However, significant strength gains are routinely observed with the use of low loads, so you can still get significant strength benefits by having more repetitions per set. Just know that you're not going to get as much benefit compared with heavier loads aiming for 1 to 5 repetitions per set. What has changed is the advice on muscle building. So if we were targeting just muscle building, then it used to be recommended for between 8 and 12 repetitions per set. However, there's a compelling body of literature indicating that muscle growth can be achieved across a wide spectrum of loading ranges. Therefore, as a matter of principle, there is no ideal muscle growth zone. Instead, what has become abundantly clear in the research is that participants must expend a high level of effort. So even if you're lifting lighter weights, you just need to make sure that you're doing more repetitions of that lighter weight so that you're still tiring out your muscles and approaching failure. This strategy is at least as effective as training with heavier loads for muscle building. So not muscle strength, but muscle building. The key takeaway is that we need a high level of effort because there are advantages for lifting lighter weights, particularly for older individuals who may struggle to train with heavier loads due to joint related conditions such as osteoarthritis. There's also a suggestion in the research that if we train with moderate loads as opposed to very heavy loads then we can reduce our chance of injury again so long as we are approaching maximal effort. If I can sum that section up it's personalization. If we're chasing absolute strength gains then we do want to be aiming for heavy loads with 1 to 5 repetitions. But if we want to try and make sure that we minimize our chance of injury, then maybe moderate loads are better where we have between 8 and 12 repetitions. And personally, that's what I aim for. I go for a moderate load that allows me to do between 8 and 12 repetitions per set. The next point is around muscle endurance. So it used to be thought that we had to do many repetitions, so more than 15 per set, to optimize for muscle endurance. That is no longer the case. Studies that have compared the effects of heavy and moderate load training show similar effects in muscle endurance between the different conditions. The next question is should we be training to failure? And what I mean by this is that we do so many repetitions of one particular exercise that we can no longer do one further repetition. Well, the current evidence indicates that lifting loads to failure versus stopping just before failure does not provide any long-term strength benefits. Put simply, we should not be training to failure. The question is how close should we approach failure? For example, one repetition short of failure or two repetitions short of failure. We don't yet know and more research is required, but there are significant advantages for not training to failure. We reduce the delay of subsequent recovery and we may reduce the chance of injury. Personally, for each set, I stop about two repetitions before failure. The next point is to make sure that we start each set minimally fatigued. And what I mean by this is that we're giving our body enough chance to recover between 
in each set, so we want to have at least two minutes of rest before each set. The next is that we want to optimize our recovery between exercise sessions. When we exercise, we damage our muscles, so when we sleep and recover, we rebuild our muscles, but we actually have a super compensation effect. And over time, these small, repeated, incremental improvements lead to measurable and practically meaningful increases in strength. So if we design an exercise plan to make sure that we're getting enough rest, then it's likely that we can get further benefits. For example, we might design an exercise plan where one day we're working out our chest, triceps and legs, then the next day is back and biceps before switching back the following day to chest, triceps and legs. This makes sure that we give our muscle groups time to recover. The next point is to make sure that we are progressively overloading our muscles. So what I mean by this is that when we start to exercise, we will start to see incremental improvements and it's important that we either increase the weight or increase the repetitions that we're doing. That way we are continually signaling to our body that it needs to become stronger. The final point I want to mention is a really interesting avenue of research called supramaximal muscle contractions. This is where the load during the eccentric phase or the muscle lengthening phase is greater than the load during the corresponding concentric phase. For example, if we lift a weight using both arms but then lower that weight using one arm. The research that we have so far seems to indicate that that strategy generates even further muscle performance improvements. And I want to finish this video by emphasizing the point that we can get significant muscle performance improvements using light loads. So long as we increase the amount of repetitions we're doing to the point where we're achieving a high level of effort. That's the crucial point. No matter which exercise plan we're doing, we have to make sure that we're doing a high level of effort. And if you're looking for a supplement that along with resistance exercise may further improve muscle strength, make sure to check out this next video here on TMG. A massive thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization and to benefit from the ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.